Is the mystery of how to get men to chase you becoming exhausting? Do you wish you knew exactly how men thought so you knew how to trigger his hot pursuit of you the same way you see them doing for other women? Well, on today's show, we're going to discuss how to use ego to get a man chasing after you so that you can utilize this unstoppable force to not only get him to chase you, but to do anything you want. And the best part is you won't even have to lift a finger to do it. So let's start off with the male gaze. The male gaze is essentially just the aspect of how in film and media, me, uh, women are portrayed from the perspective of a man. If I'm dressing Margot Robbie for a scene, I'm going to dress her in a particular way that accentuates particular features that would be most attractive to the men. That's, that's essentially the male gaze. And because a lot of men mostly are the ones writing and creating movies and, you know, control media. A lot of how women are portrayed in the media is through the male gaze. Also, people don't consider is the recognition that men have not only of the woman, but the recognition that men have of other men <laughs> realizing that they're also interested in that woman. And that does something to men. So then that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of the reason I like her is because she's valuable and she's valuable. I know that she's actually valuable because everyone else also likes her. This is how groupthink plays a role in your per the perception, your perceived value. OK, because as guys like you and are interested in you, that's great. But what even becomes more powerful is when you trigger uh, the confirmation of their perception of your value by showing them, whether directly or indirectly, that other people also see you as valuable because now they don't want to be the person that goes against the grain. They want to see what everyone else is also seeing in you. A woman is hot through the male gaze. But a woman is made even hotter through the male gaze when he recognizes that other men also find her hot. I know you're probably going to be like, what? That doesn't that doesn't really sound like those are straight men. They are. OK, but I just want you to understand how ego plays such intense, real role in men's perception of women and how men play a part in that ego that you can actually utilize all of those aspects to your advantage to trigger these responses from men that they don't really have any control over. Number two is competition. And I want you to understand, I'm going to be discussing you as if you are something to be one. I'm not objectifying you because you are actually an object. I just need you to understand the concept so you can understand why men are responding in particular ways. Natural to men. They always want to feel like they're the best or at the very least that they're better than the next man. It feeds their ego. So inherently, there is a subconscious competition between men for who can prove to be the most powerful, amazing, mighty man in all of the land. I know it sounds very caveman-ish, and even though we don't live in caveman days anymore, the mentality still exists. It's just uh, matured itself and uh, changed it and morph morphed itself into the lives that we live now. Men are not just competing for resources in terms of money, a bigger house, a faster car, but they're also competing for the most, what they would consider the most valuable women. So if men are also in competition for the most valuable women, meaning the women who have all the qualities, not just the beauty, not just the dump truck, not just the yiddies, but the personality, the aura, the energy, the confidence, right? The best of the best women. Let's just think of it like that. If those are what's considered the most valuable women, and we've already talked about how value is really based on perception, then you, then you should get the understanding that the men will compete more for you if their perception of you is that you're more valuable. I know this sounds very transactional, but start thinking of attraction and desire kind of like you would a business because a business is all about supply and demand. The more supply and the less demand, you're not really going to have what's considered a very valuable product. Okay. You're not a product. I just need you to understand the concept. The spirit of the competition can only be triggered by something he feels is slightly unattainable. Your job is to, in the process of dating guys and you identify the guys that you like and you want to increase their desire in you, your job is to find that perfect balance 
where he can enjoy some time with you, but it's never enough that it feels like he wants to see you less. You always want to leave him with the taste that I want more of you. Three, let's talk about the prize or we can consider it the trophy. And so if you're embodying qualities of a highly sought after woman, then you yourself become the reward. And if you yourself are the reward, then men feel good about getting you and getting access to you. Because if there's competition for you, like I mentioned before, and if they know that all the other men are also paying attention to you and they want you as well, which is increasing your value in their mind, right? Then getting you becomes a reward in itself. Now, now, very important. You never really want guys to feel like they've totally and utterly won. You want them to be feeling like they're just out of reach of getting you. Like that's the ego boost. I've won the prize. I've gotten the prize. I got what all the other men were seeking for. All the other men are desperate to be with this woman who is so valuable and they are peasants beneath my feet because I step on them and I show off the fact that I've won the prize that every other guy wants. Ha ha ha. I wank off in all your peasant faces. But if you don't present yourself as a prize or something to be won, something to be attained, something Thing that everyone wants, well then, how do you think he's going to perceive you and treat you as a prize then? The ultimate prize is not desperate. The ultimate prize is not needy. The ultimate prize, like we talked about, is not available. The ultimate prize is not uh, seeking validation from him. That way, as you go on into your relationships, you can, you, you can be thinking about, I want to make sure I'm embodying a dream girl and not a regular everyday mundane girl. Because when I embody the dream girl, I will receive dream girl energy from him and dream girl pursuit from him. If I embody some mundane girl who gets used and, and, and disregarded of by every other man, well, rest assured, that's exactly how he'll treat me. He'll treat me like trash. This is why I tried to make it so clear to you guys that value is based more on perception than it is on actual quality and how if you can control that perception, well, then you can control his view of you and how he responds to you and approaches you. Now, number four, I want us to discuss challenges. If you're going to be rewarded for a prize, you're going to have to do work for that prize or trophy. Subsequently, you also, if you're going to embody a prize, if you think you're the prize, well, then that means inherently there has to be challenges that come with attaining you. So let's say you start dating a guy uh, right away. And then as you're dating this guy, uh, let's say in the first week, you go, you go on, let's say two dates in that week. And so those two dates were planned. They were scheduled, all that good stuff. And then he says, oh, uh, so um, actually next week I'm super busy um, and I don't know if I'll be able to see you next week. Can I just see you tomorrow instead? Right. And he's texting you this, asking you this. Can I just see you tomorrow? What's going to naturally happen is if you went on those dates with that guy and you and you you really like him and you really like where this is going, you're going to be like, oh, well, I really like you. I like how this is going. And yes, we went on two dates this week, but I love spending time with you. So yes, you can see me tomorrow. I'll clear my schedule. Or I'll do whatever I need to do to, to be with you because I want to make it easy on you to see me and I want to build this intensity up real fast. What I want you to do instead is challenge him and say, no, actually, I'm not free tomorrow. I can't do things last minute. My only free day next week is, let's say, Friday. If you can't do that day, then you're going to have to wait till the week after and you just leave it there. Then you put the onus and you challenge him to say, if you really want to see me that bad, you'll clear your schedule for next Friday and be available when I'm available or you'll wait till next week and you'll schedule me for two weeks in advance, both of which are good. And the reason I say that is because if there are not challenges, then men don't feel like they have to I had to actually work in order to get you. See, the prize of getting you is an ego boost in itself, but you also have to understand you're confirming the fact that you're valuable to him while he's pursuing you by giving him challenges in order to get more access to you. So if it's too easy for him, he'll feel like there's a misalignment between his perceived value of you and the fact that it's very easy to get more access to you. Number five, I want us to discuss reflection. After he feels like he's gotten you, or at least feels like he's gotten more access to you than all the other peasant men, he looks in the mirror and the fact that he was able to attain you or obtain access to you becomes a reflection to him of himself. And this is really how the ego ties into everything. 
Because when you can make yourself actually have uh, be perceived as having value and you can treat yourself like the prize and have him treat you like a prize, when he finally feels like he's getting more and more access to you, you become a self-reflection of his own view of his own self-esteem and how good or successful he is in life as a person. When you are the vessel through which someone can, a guy specifically, can feed and boost his own ego, well, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to take very precious care of you because without you, what, what happens? His ego is destroyed. If he gets access to the prize that everyone wants and he gets to say, I'm with the girl that everyone wishes they could be with, and then you walk away from him, what happens to his view of himself? He no longer gets to validate himself and his ego through the uh, expression of being with you. So there's a lot of pain associated with you not being with him. He doesn't get to brag to the other men and say, look at all you peasants, I step on you with the bottom of my shoe. He doesn't get to say that like he's on the top of the mountain when he's not standing next to you anymore because you represent his power, you represent his success, you represent uh, his ability to brag to those other men. I know it sounds very uh, not straight, but it is straight still. I just need you to understand how this plays a role and, and how men think. And see, this is where everything we talk about comes into play because now when you withdraw your energy, what does that do? It makes him feel threatened in the relationship. You, you seem to be withdrawing as if you're prepared to walk away. Uh, please, uh, let me know what I must do in order to fix this and adjust this because no, if you walk away, this is not good for, this is not good for me.